Americans grow more negative about the U.S. economy, but so far the Romney campaign has not been able to take advantage. After the Supreme Court's decision on health care, Republicans turn against Chief Justice John Roberts. And the fascinating case of Americans with postgraduate degrees and Obama's appeal to that group. I'm Frank Newport, Gallup Editor-in-Chief. I'm Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. And this is Election Matters. Well, Susan, uh, the economy is at minus 27. That's our Gallup Consumer Confidence Index. We call it economic confidence for the week that just ended last Sunday. That's the lowest by one point since January. So Americans clearly more negative about the economy. Uh, but as we said in the intro, so far Mitt Romney, the challenger, has not been able to take advantage of it. He's not been able to move ahead, let's say like Bill Clinton was able to do back in 1992 at about this time after Ross Perot dropped out of the campaign. Yeah, the race continues to be very competitive, uh, but Barack Obama holds on to this narrow lead. And some Republicans are saying Mitt Romney, if his campaign was being run better, it would be ahead at this point. Yeah, the campaign had been very close when we started tracking in April 11, like 46-46 for both candidates. But over the last 18 days and over the last three weeks, actually, when you put it together, Obama's ahead by two points, 47 to 45. And that's now been fairly consistent that Obama has this lead. So clearly, Romney's not been able to surge. If anything, he's doing a little less well than he did before, as we're talking about here. Now, the, the big thing that's happened, of course, is the Obama campaign has been bombarding the airwaves. And we saw it in our USA Today Gallup's swing states poll. Their uh, voters are very aware of all these ads going on. And it's got one theme, bad things about Mitt Romney, bad things about Mitt Romney, and maybe that's having an effect. And it means that not only is Mitt Romney taking all this criticism on how he got his wealth, whether he's uh, kept the, the welfare of American workers in mind, uh, but it also means he's not talking about the issue that he wants to talk about, which is, for instance, the state of unemployment in America or the housing crisis and where that stands now. Yeah, that's what the, the point would be on the part of the Obama campaign, get the focus off of the current economy and on to whether Mitt Romney would be able to do anything better. We did ask in a poll whether his wealth, because that's been another issue, uh, made a difference. And 20% of Americans said yes, they were less likely to vote uh, for Romney because he was worth over $200 million, uh, but that's primarily Democrats, but some independents said that affected him, so that may be having an effect too. 19% of independents said they mm -hmm. would be less likely to vote for just 4% more likely. It was interesting that among Republicans, 8% were more likely to vote That's for Romney right. because he's wealthy, only 4% less likely. So among Republicans, they like the fact that he's a rich yeah, guy. Yeah, a small group of them say that's a plus. He was able to be, uh, and that's what Obama, uh, Romney said himself, you know, hey, I'm a success and I can use those successful principles on the U.S. economy. He's trying to make that same point. But what the Obama people have succeeded in doing, at least at the moment, is the same thing uh, that happened uh, in 2004 with mm -hmm. the Bush campaign. They took a big asset by Senator Kerry, which was his service in Vietnam. They made it a negative with the Swiss, Swift boat attacks. And in this case, a big asset for Mitt Romney, which has been his business experience, now has been turned into uh, less of an asset, maybe even a liability with some voters. Yeah, keep in mind, we're talking about glass half empty, half full here, right? Because the race is still very close, statistically tied. So it's not like Obama's rushed out to a huge lead. And some of the Republicans have been saying, look, with all the money he's spending, he should be further ahead. Of course, our premise here has been with the bad economy, maybe Romney should be more ahead. So it really kind of depends on your interpretation. Yes, right? absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, other big news, of course, was the Supreme Court decision. We're getting some more on the health care. We're getting some more data in now. And boy, did attitudes towards Roberts flip between Republicans and Democrats. Yes, mm -hmm. it's true. Among Republicans, they only 27 percent now have a favorable view of Chief Justice Roberts, 44 percent an unfavorable view. And that is a complete turnaround from the favorable impression that Republicans had before this decision upholding the constitutionality. Of yeah, now there was law. a spread of time because we asked about him USA Today Gallup poll back in 05 when Bush had nominated him. Uh, Rehnquist died, then he was nominated as, as to be Chief Justice, and it was 60-something percent favorable on the part of Republicans for Roberts back then. Now, we haven't asked about him since, so maybe his view, his attitude have changed, but uh, certainly we think that mostly it was due to this most recent decision. And now Democrats say, John Roberts, our best friend, right? They like him. <laughs> A big jump, 32 by 32 percentage points, mm -hmm. 32 percentage points, Democrats now view him more favorably. That may not last because John Roberts has generally sided with the conservative factions of the court, but on 
on this big issue, boy, he's really changed his friends and foes. And by the way, the same thing happened on overall job approval for the Supreme Court. Didn't change overall, but underneath it all, we saw this flip between Republicans and Democrats. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happened. Susan, the post, you and I, we can confess here, both have postgraduate degrees, <laughs> it's right? It's true. Yeah, that's right. But that doesn't, we're neutral, of course, personally. But boy, in the data, one thing that really strikes us, and, and I wanted to mention this, is how much those with postgraduate degrees support Obama, regardless of their income. I just did an analysis, and even among those that have $180,000 or more income, the highest category we look at routinely, most of whom that don't have postgraduate degrees are strongly for Romney, they're for Obama. So something about getting a postgraduate degree for voters out there just suddenly goes, whoop, I'm supporting Obama. It's really fascinating. And among other educational levels, you find that it does change with income. So you've looked at this. Why do you think this is the case? You know, I don't have a real answer for it. And one of the conundrums is that when we say postgraduate degrees, that puts everybody in the kitchen sink together, right? You've got a, an MBA out there who's as conservative as they get, you know, on Wall Street, a hedge fund guy. We have lawyers who can be conservative. We have, we have doctors and then we have PhDs who are teaching in liberal departments and universities. All these we throw together, but whatever it is, throwing it together, uh, whites included, they're very sympathetic to Obama. It's one of the, his areas of strength is Americans who are highly educated. Yeah, well that is interesting. Well we'll see. It's kind of a downtime now, uh, but we'll see going forward what happens. Uh, the key will be whether the decision on the vice president's announced before mm -hmm. uh, the Olympics start. We'll see what happens on that, right? But That's right. And then we'll have the conventions come up. Another thing to look for. Absolutely. I'm Frank Newport, Gallup Editor-in-Chief. I'm Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. And this is Election Matters.